Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do is going to be my makeup monthly for the month of March. This is where I go through all of the products that I have been trying and then I rank them from my least favorite to my top favorite. I also do a creator shout out in these videos and I do have one book to share with you at the end of favorite book that I read from the month of March. So we have a lot to get through today. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I did wanna mention that I filmed this look. This is actually my March Makeup Madness finale video, which should already be up because I think I should have that video up before this one. But I will have it in the cards and put it in my description box if you wanted to see how that video went where you were voting on the full face of all of these products right here. I do always link all of my makeup in the description box as well as the products that I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be ranking from 12 to 1 today. Yes, I have my notes on a post-it. Thank you so much. I'm going to be ranking from 12 to 1. We all know that I don't just have 12 products in here though, so let's get started. At number 12, at the bottom, the bottom of the barrel, the Benefit Their Real Mascara, Magnet Mascara, Their Real Magnet Mascara, whatever, this mascara, this new mascara from Benefit, we all know. Hmm. So Benefit sent this to me in PR, which I'm always really grateful to be able to try out products, to be able to review them, but I always review them honestly. This mascara got all over my face. All over my face. And it actually even happened live on camera. As I was filming a Will I Buy It one day, which they typically take me pretty long to film those, I didn't realize it, but in the last clips, I have so much mascara underneath my eyes. I was like, oh, oh dear. I decided to just leave it to not refilm the clips because I was like, if that's not a review of this mascara, I don't know what else is. This transfers on me so badly. I've worn it a handful of times now just trying to see like, cause you know, fluke things can happen, but I could have like sneezed or cried or something along those lines. I didn't. But so I was like, you know, it might have just been a one-time thing. It's not a one-time thing. This mascara gets everywhere. I thought it made my lashes look nice. I wasn't like blown away like I thought I was going to be because I've seen some really, really positive reviews about this mascara. And I just, I guess I was expecting for just so much more when I tried it. And I was kind of like, okay, I mean, like it's fine, but you know, it's a high-end mascara. But the transferring was on another level for me. So I... We'll never be wearing this again. Okay. At number 11, I have a hair oil. This one is from the company called Flower Supply. This is their 100% pure organic oil. No, no, no. So this says Flower Supply is the 100% natural goddess of all oils. I did also get this sent in PR. I got quite a few hair products from this brand and so far I really haven't been loving everything, but the hair oil was one of the first products that I started trying because I had actually run out of my, um, my Olaplex number no. seven oil and I was like, oh, I have this one, I'll just use it. This was before I had my extensions. I did get NBR extensions recently. This made my hair look oily, which is like my fear with hair oils and why I haven't used them a lot because I've thought, why would I put this on my hair that I just washed? Because then my hair's going to look oily and then what do I do? But good hair oils don't do that. This does that. It really weighed down my hair. It just instantly made my hair look like it needed to be washed again. So when I was trying this, I was finding myself washing my hair every other day. And normally I wash my hair like day three, day four day five and this one there was just there's just no and I tried it several times because you only need like the tiniest drop I really did try it several times and my hair just did not look good at number 10 this is from NARS I didn't mind like we're kind of getting into the section of like I didn't really like mind these products but this is their air matte lip color so I've been trying out the shade all yours which is a pretty shade it's just not really my favorite type of lipstick it's a little bit more on kind of like the moussey side, I would say. It's a little bit more lightweight, not quite as opaque. Kind of reminds me a little bit maybe of like ColourPop and their, maybe like their blotted lips is what I'm thinking of. Like it doesn't give a ton of oomph, a ton of color payoff. It's fun, like it's not, I don't think it's a bad product. It's just one of those that it's, it's not my particular lip preference. So like it was decent. It doesn't have like the longest wear time by any means, but it was, it was fine. 
it was fine. This is like my fine category, how I used to do my makeup monthly. We've entered into the fine category. And then along those lines at number nine, I have from e.l.f. This is their palette from Chipotle. This is their palette in collaboration with Chipotle. You can't go to Chipotle and order this like you would a burrito, which I wouldn't recommend, by the way. I would not recommend Chipotle burritos. I drove an hour away to get a burrito because of this collection, and it fell apart in my lap. Apparently, you can't take the whole wrapper off a Chipotle burrito. I don't feel like I should have to have instructions when I eat my food. So I'm going to stick with Poncheros, but thank you. I'll try a burrito bowl one day. But this is the uh, e.l.f. and Chipotle eyeshadow palette. Now, formula wise, I don't mind it. I thought it was really easy to use. I have a video with this, the NARS products. I can link it in the cards also. I don't mind the quality. To me, it's just the color scheme. And it's so funny because people are like, you love greens and you love purples. I feel like you should love this palette. Me too. That was like my first thoughts. But there's not a lot of blending shades in here. And that's kind of what I need. Like for me personally, I like having lighter tones that I can blend everything together. The mattes that we have in here are all darker, deeper shades. And then it's just a, there's a lot of shimmers in here too. And I'm more of a matte girl. So I'm just kind of like, huh? I feel like there's only so many looks I can do with this one. I mean, I get it. The colors make sense to like the, or to the collaboration and all of that. But for me and my personal makeup preferences, I'm kind of like stumped on what to do. Uh, but I'll have some more products from the Chipotle collection coming up later in the video. Number eight, this is a collection with ColourPop. I have a few different items here. This was their Bambi collection. So the eyeshadow palette that I decided to try out was Thumper. I do like these mini palettes. I think that this is fun. We have the five shades in here, and this was the one that I gravitated to. A little bit more cool tones, some purple. Wow, how shocking. And I, I didn't mind it. The looks that I've done with it haven't been my absolute favorite by any means but it was like it was fine it's i don't think it's a bad palette i was just kind of like okay i don't know maybe five shades is, is not enough for me or maybe just the five of these shades i i don't know it was fine it was fine it just it wasn't one of those when i've done eye looks i've been like bang on girl i've been like oh you look okay today you know and then for the lashes, these are the Oh Dear Lashes. I was really excited about these. I've worn them a couple times. Once again, I think that they're okay. They might be a little bit like too spiky. Once again, just for my personal makeup taste, I like the ColourPop lashes. I would recommend them if you find a style that you like. I would recommend to keep getting them because they're, they're comfortable, they're more affordable. I just didn't feel like the style was absolutely me. So it was... It was an okay collection. At number seven, another product from NARS. This is their Air Matte Blush. I was really excited to try this out. This was sent over from NARS. I was really excited to test this out because I have been dabbling into some more cream products these days. So fun. Uh, the shade that I was trying was Freedom, which it looks really pink in the pan. It, it doesn't, you can sheer it out and it's kind of more of like a pinky mauve. I thought it was a pretty shade and not too, it doesn't look as intense on the cheeks as it, as it does in here. I think it's okay compared to all of my cream blushes. I'm thinking about doing like a ranking cream products video since I don't have a whole lot in my collection. I thought maybe that would be interesting. Let me know if you'd want to see that. I think it's okay though. It's, it's not, I don't want to say it's hard to work with. I was going to say it's not the easiest cream blush I've ever worked with, but it, at the same time, it's not hard. Again, it's one of those that's falling into the fine category. I just feel like I have other ones that I would like more. And I, even like the ColourPop serum blushes, I feel like are pretty good so far. The Danessa Myricks, again, those are products that I'm testing out right now. Kind of like those a little bit more, but I didn't, I didn't mind this one. I thought it was okay. It's NARS, so it's going to be a little bit more pricey. Not a favorite, not a fail. At number six, I have this product from Benefit. I really wasn't thinking I was going to enjoy this one. This is their Porefessional Super Setter. I always want to say Super Spreader, but their Super Setter Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray. I did use it today in that March Makeup Madness video. I've actually really liked it though. I've Setting sprays are one of those that I feel like I don't really notice if I'm enjoying the, enjoying it so much until I realize that I keep reaching for Aries is living her best life. Until I keep reaching for it and I keep reaching for it, I'm like, oh yeah, I've used the setting spray five times in a row now that I've done my makeup. So that tells me that I really like it. So uh, yeah, it's just supposed to be a lightweight micro fine mist to help lock on makeup, softens the look of pores, feels weightless. I would agree with all of that. It is a super fine mist. Uh, it doesn't mess up my makeup at all. It doesn't leave droplets on my face, but I feel like it does a good job of holding on to makeup, which I appreciate. And today 
had a little bit of an interesting combo with your votes in the March Makeup Madness and I was thinking about a setting spray and I was like, I'm gonna use that one from Benefit because I feel like it really does kind of help lock everything in and I do have more oily skin and I feel like this kind of helps my oils not, not be creeping up too, too quick, if you know what I mean. So I don't, if you're in the market for a good setting spray, there's been a few here recently that I've really enjoyed, but this one from Benefit kind of took my best surprise a little bit. Next up, I have another eyeshadow palette from ColourPop Cosmetics. This is their Wild Child. Speaking of Wild Child, this is the Wild Child palette. All right. I was a little late trying this one, but I, I actually really like it. Uh, I mean, a neutral brown palette that has a little bit more depth to it. I, I I like this one a lot. I do often like the ColourPop formula. I feel like they're really getting into like different. I, I feel like I never quite know what the ColourPop formula is going to be like in the next eyeshadow palette that they send, but the one in here I really do enjoy. The shimmers are really beautiful. I thought the mattes were easy to blend. I love a good brown smoky eye and I feel like that's what I can get in the wild child so I really like this one. At number four I have this here from Ofer Cosmetics. This is the Crew Blush and Bronzer Duo Compact. So they recently came out with these duos with a blush on one side and a bronzer on the other. There are three duos total total crew is one and then what is the other one that i've been using crew is the one that i use the most so i figured i would show it in here um but there are two that i can use and i like these a lot i mean i'm a fan of the ofra face products uh by the time this video comes out i'm again pre-filming in advance but by the time this video comes out my next collection will be released with ofra and it does include a bronzer and a blush in a palette and then I have the singles that are already available. So we all know that I really do enjoy this formula, but I like having the blush and the bronzer as a duo. Uh, I didn't know if I would and I didn't know, you know, kind of my thing is like, oh, like are my brushes gonna fit and all of that, but they definitely do. Even bronzer, like the BK Beauty 103 fits on this side of the bronzer too and fits in my palette in case you wondered about that. But I kind of like having the dual purpose here or you can even mix them together and they make a pretty shade. So I'm really enjoying these from Ofra. My discount code with them is Samantha. And then at number three, I have some more from the Chipotle collection here. So I definitely wanted to mention the gloss because if you want to look like you got lip fillers, <laughs> I would just go ahead and get this gloss. I don't, it might still be sold out and by the time this video goes up, who really knows? But this is the Make It Hot Lip Plumping Gloss. It does tingle a little bit. It does tingle a little bit. Um, there is that. But it's not too bad. It's not like the Too Faced Extreme Lip Injection by any means. But you can feel a little, t it, it kind of feels like maybe you chewed a little bit of big red gum and then like for some reason dabbed it on your lips. I'm not really sure why anyone would do that, but that's the feeling that I would describe it as. But it really plumps up your lips. I had multiple people ask me if I got lip fillers when I wear this gloss and I'm like, no, it's just the gloss. You think I'm not gonna vlog me getting lip fillers? Come on, let's content baby content. So I actually really like it and it's not too red. I worried for the first time that I tried it that it was gonna be like this hot red shade of gloss, but it's really pretty sheer. I mean, depending on what lip liner you pair with it or if you put it over a lipstick, you could manipulate the color, but it's a pretty sheer, like light toned pinky red gloss, but I think it's really nice. And then I also did really enjoy the sponges. I wanted to throw these in here too. The little avocado duo sponges. Clearly I need to wash mine, but that just is what it is. But I really like these sponges. I thought the quality on them was really good. I'm definitely gonna use this one more because the smaller ones I don't use as much, but I get it. It's good for under the eyes or like on the inner corner or cleaning up or different things like that. But this avocado sponge I think is pretty fun. At number two, who is a skincare product. Oh, wow, have I really been liking this one. This is from First Aid Beauty. This is their Ultra Repair Firming Collagen Cream. This is a new product. It comes in a nice glass jar here. And when I got it, I had just run out of my moisturizer that I had been using for um, the PM. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and see what this is about. Let me, let me tell you about it. So this is $42. It's available at Sephora. This is a luxurious moisturizer to hydrate and visibly firm the skin. It's supposed to be good for normal dry combo skin. Uh, it has collagen, peptides, and niacinamide, which is an ingredient that I, I really enjoy. Uh, so it says packed with collagens, peptides, niacinamide to support and smooth skin, making it visibly bouncy, healthy, and youthful while diminishing the look of fine lines and wrinkles. Since I started trying this, this is like the only night moisturizer I've been using. And you know, as 
as your prior skincare influencer of the year and still as a skincare enthusiast, I like trying new things. And even though I know it's not always best for my skin, sometimes I just want to try new things. You can see the bottom of that moisture. I have not stopped. I have not stopped using this. It is thick. It is luxurious. And I don't know how to explain, like, you know how the description said it, like, visibly plumps? I feel that way. I feel that way in the, because I, I wear this at night. It's, it's like my sleeping moisturizer, if you will. And I'm feeling good. Like I've been feeling, I've been feeling good. Sometimes skincare, I feel like is kind of hard for me to review. And it's like, if I know that I love a product and it's working well for me, I just use it and use it and use it and use it. And for me to be able to see the bot, like when I hit the bottom, I was like, that the bottom? And I literally put my finger in that. I was like, oh my gosh, this has been so, so good. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, I know a lot of people actually really enjoy this one. I had a call with First Aid Beauty a couple weeks ago and we were just casually chatting. It was quite fun. Um, but you know, of course they asked me about some of my favorite products and I was like, that new moisturizer you came out with is really nice. And they said it was even sold out for a while at Sephora, uh, because so many people have been enjoying it. So I have a combo oily skin. I do have hormonal acne. I am 34 or 33.2, however you'd like to look at it. Uh, but that's a little bit about my skin type and I think it's fabulous. Before we jump into my top product, I do want to do my creator shout out of the month. I've been doing this for years now. It's one of my favorite parts of my makeup monthly videos. One of my tagline is community over competition. And I just like to be able to support and shout out other people when I can. But this month I want to talk about Tina or the fancy face. I'm so happy for her because she recently hit 100,000 subscribers, which is so exciting. So I'm going to link her channel down below. She is so kind. She comments on my videos. We've chatted before on Twitter about just like random things. And I just think that she is super sweet and supportive. I also really enjoy her videos. I was just watching one from her today where she did the anti-haul, talking about like the products that she doesn't want. Um, she does reviews over there and hauls and just chats about makeup. And I just, I just enjoy her personality. I've been watching her for quite some time and I can remember the first time that she commented on something on my Twitter and I think it was about my dog. And I was like, wait a second, like what? You follow me on Twitter? Like, you know my dog? Like, I, I don't know who's more excited, me or Aries. But like I usually say in my makeup monthly videos, I just think that she is a gem. And I wanted to shout out Tina and say congratulations again on hitting 100K. So I'm gonna link her channel down below. If for some reason you're not familiar with her yet, Please go check her out. Let her know that I sent you. Let her know that I said hello. I feel like this hair is not liking me because I had my hair clipped back in my pins for so long when I was doing my makeup for the March Makeup Monthly, but this is also the same video if you watch that one where I'm having a terrible day and like everything technical is, is, is going wrong. Like my hard drive, my volume doesn't work on my computer. It's just all the kinds of things are happening. So my hair was pinned back for such a long time that this hair is like, fine, I'm just gonna be mean to you. Okay, anyways. Let's move on. Let's move over to my number one pick. This is an eyeshadow palette. It happens to be the one that I'm wearing today. This is from Kaleidos in collaboration with my friend Angelica Nikvis. This is the Club Nebula palette. So I do have a full video here on YouTube where I do three looks and I give my thoughts on the palette, but this one is so beautiful. And you know, full disclosure, I am friends with Angie. So Am I a little bit biased? Uh, you could say, but I also think that this is a really beautiful palette. This was the most voted on for my March Makeup Madness series. Again, it is what I have on today. And I wanted to do blue because now I think, I think I've used every single shade in the palette now once I got those blues out of the way. And I don't really wear blue eyeshadow. I don't think I'm really the best at wearing blue eyeshadow. I don't know if, I, I just feel like it's not my type of shade, but this eye look, I was like, Like I am feeling myself in it and I have done some fun, like for me, I feel like I have done some fun looks with the greens, with some of these duo chromes and the shimmers. The mattes are so easy to blend. Even this dark blue that I used today, I was so afraid of that shade. So easy to blend. The Kaleidos eyeshadow formula is so, so good. And this is such an Angie palette. 
and I loved you know her video where she talked about the inspiration behind the shades and why she wanted each of the colors I just think that she did a great job this palette sold out not only once but twice I know a restock is coming I believe it's in May that they are going to be doing uh, another restock of this palette and I hope that you would be able to get your hands on it but this is such a good one I love the packaging too it's such a beautiful beautiful palette so I have been wearing this one since I got it and I think that it's such a fabulous one. So that is my top pick for the month of March. I hope you enjoyed seeing my ranking of all of these products. Uh, that is where I'm going to end it for beauty. I do have one book to talk about, but if you're not interested in the book a part of this, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. But like I said, I do have one five-star book that I gave uh, a review for on my blog, which is Chiclet Plus, so let me tell you about that. So the book that I gave a five-star review to is The Love Proof, and this is by Madeline Henry. Madeline Henry is an author who I enjoy so much. Her debut novel, Breathe In, Cash Out, I thought was so, so good. If you haven't read that one, I will also link that in my description box. The Love Proof, to me, I felt like was very different from Breathe In, Cash Out, which has a little bit more of a chiclet feel to it, and it incorporates yoga and your main characters in the finance world, and she's trying to get out of it. The Love Proof, to me, is also very smartly written, just like Breathe In, Cash Out, but on a totally different wavelength. It's it spurs decades it takes us across decades and it follows this really epic love story and what it really means to love someone and let them go and fulfill their full potential and all of these different facets to this book when i first started reading it i did get this feeling of like ooh, <laughs> i'm not sure i'm gonna really be able to connect because i almost felt like I wasn't smart enough to be reading the book. I mean, we follow a physics prodigy is how Sophie Jones is described. And just some of the language in the book and what they're discussing, I'm like, oh, this is out of my league. Like, this is a little bit over my head. But as I kept going and I was just a few chapters in, then you really start to see the bigger picture and the whole story starts to unfold. And you just kind of get fascinated in Sophie's world and how she went from being this physics prodigy of everyone looking at her and going to Yale and having everything ahead of her and then how falling in love really changes that and changes her perspective on things and it was really fascinating to watch her story and the ups and downs of it and I don't want to I, I never want to say like too much in my reviews my written reviews or when I'm speaking because I don't want to give too much away from the book. It is a little, I would say it's a little bit longer, but again, it, it, it's covering truly decades of Sophie's life and some of the other characters uh, that she comes into contact with. But when I say like an epic love story, like that's what I think of when I think of the love proof. And it was so beautiful. And even getting to the end, it was just one of those that gave you a little stirring inside and had a little tear come to my eye. And it just really made me think a lot and it also I found it fast like the physics part of it I actually found fascinating too once I started to get a grasp on like the love theory and how certain things were coming together and then there's also a lot of talk of like Wall Street and investing and some of you might know that I've been interested in that recently so it would just it all came together so well I think Madeline Henry is such a talented writer and I was actually able to interview her for my podcast which was so exciting for me my podcast is start inspired I'll have the link to our interview down below and we talked about the difference between breathe in cash out and the love proof and why she wanted to write the love proof so much fun to be able to to talk to her um, and I'm such a fan of her work I can't wait for her next book to come out because uh, I will definitely be reading that one too so I will link the love proof in my description box I'll link my review if you want to check that out on my book blog also uh, but yeah I would highly recommend that one uh, and I would say I would classify it as women's fiction so all right that is it though for my March makeup monthly ranking all of the products that I have been trying out I I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go and I'll see you in my next video.